My name is Vanguard. My body is an aluminium sphere, 16.5 centimeters in diameter, and I weigh 1.47 kilograms. In 1958, I was the first solar-powered satellite to be launched into outer space. I had value. I served a purpose. And now, I drift, aimlessly, in perpetual orbit. Since my retirement, I have become a piece of space junk. The oldest human artifact circling the Earth. I do not travel alone. Millions of other pieces of junk orbit with me. Rocket parts, fuel tanks, batteries, dead satellites. Before we became junk, we each had a use. But now, we've become a threat. I gotta tell you, I think my spank has escaped. Once we get in, depressurize that outer portion, it pop open the, uh, the internal hatch, and it's time for Piers to slide outside. That's Piers' feet uh, in the, near the center of the screen. We did uh, actually lose a, uh, a spatula somewhere along the way. Um, it uh, accidentally got lost. ¿Qué sintió al perder un elemento como este y, y saber que este elemento va a seguir eh, orbitando a nuestro planeta? como uno de los elementos más dentro de tantos cientos de miles de elementos que orbitan dentro de, de la basura espacial. This spatula, like all space junk, traveled at 17,500 miles per hour. Eventually, it burned up in Earth's atmosphere. You know, after we learned of its loss, we mourned it, because this spaxa was really trying to get away. And she got away, clean, and went off to become a satellite of her own, and, and space debris. Normalmente, no hay mucho conocimiento de la gente, o no se habla mucho, porque es como el patio oscuro de lo que es nuestra atmósfera que es la parte de los remanentes. Good day from the International Space Station. This morning is the scene of cautionary vigilance as Flight Director Chris Edelin and his Orbit One team of flight controllers monitor the approach of a small chunk of space debris in the vicinity of the station that prompted the precautionary sheltering of the six crew members in their respective Soyuz spacecraft. Space debris, you know, as, a, as an operating astronaut, it was just the enemy. Everything between this and teeny weeny weeny, we can't see it, we don't know where it is. So it's a, a sleet, a sleet of very fast moving stuff with closing speeds of maybe, um, you know, one to two miles per second. A piece of space debris is just 20 minutes and 45 seconds away. Flight controllers standing by here in Mission Control, just 30 seconds to go until the time of closest approach. The 
green light has been given for the crew to back out of their sheltering procedures with the uh, piece of uh, Cosmos satellite debris having come and gone with no threat uh, to the International Space Station. For our colleagues, uh, have a nice weekend. Uh, this is Mission Control Houston. So we play the odds. You know, it's a big sky theory that the stuff that we can't see will miss us. And so far, you know, we've been lucky. It's getting crowded up here. Some of us have already collided with and destroyed working satellites. One more collision could create a cascade, creating more debris, followed by more collisions. Our destructive power might eliminate current satellites altogether. Future space exploration may also become impossible. Every orbital launch generates rocket parts as debris, as mine once did. Some pieces remain orbiting forever. Some burn up. Some land unpredictably on Earth. Some, they say, are guided safely into the ocean. This is some of the debris currently orbiting planet Earth. We are a floating graveyard. Apparently, people believe that harpoons, magnets, or nets could catch us and limit the future damage we threaten to cause. But right now, there's no viable means to bring us back to Earth, to bring us home. I think that the the, the business of dealing with the unknown is what attracts a lot of people to science, a lot of people to astronautics. Es hace un par de días tuvimos una visita de de personas mayores, en donde uno de ellos eh, me preguntó si es que era normal llorar cuando se miraba el cielo. Dijo que ella lo, el sentimiento que le embargaba era de mucha un sentimiento de mucha profundidad dentro de ella. Okay. I was hanging out of a truss by one hand for a while. It was night. And suddenly I saw the sun come up uh, on the horizon ahead of me. My feet hanging over the earth. I watched the dawn come up over the planet and just come in a line straight underneath me. And then the sun come up and hit me in the face. It's honestly the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. It's just like you're standing in space, you know, naked or sitting in shorts or something, and you're totally in the environment. You become very, very aware of how huge the planet is below you and how beautiful it is. Vanguard was uh, America's first satellite in space. Now there she is. Uh, still up there with her little whip antennas waggling, not in the wind, but in the vacuum space, going around and around and around. Quiet now, nothing happening, but perfectly preserved as far as we know. So one day somebody will go out there with a butterfly net and snag her. Puede ser sentimientos entre emoción, o sea, de tristeza también, de incógnita, de saber 
no sé, estamos expuestos a que un trozo de esto nos caiga encima o, o puede que no, o puede que esto quede orbitando eternamente. 